Hi there, and welcome to the very first episode of Destry Advice, where we'll be diving into your questions like a graceful narwhal to find out why you are so messed up. <laughs> With me, certified advice giver in the state of Nebraska. And if that doesn't make me qualified, let me just remind you, I am wearing a blazer right now. Oh my god, this guy's wearing a blazer. That makes him more trustworthy. Let's listen to what he has to say. And I won't lie, usually my advice is uh, pretty unorthodox, so my legal team has instructed me to deliver this quick disclaimer. For the love of god, do not take any advice from this man. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get into my definitely clinically accepted advice. And really quick, I will say that when I asked for questions for advice from you guys, I expected them to be like silly, lighthearted, things that we could all joke about, but no. Literally all of them were incredibly depressing. <laughs> like, are you guys okay? No, that's why I clicked this video. So I decided instead to make this into just a normal Q&A uh, where I'll be taking your guys' questions as per usual and turning them into a prolapsed asshole that we call the Captain Desk Desk Q&A show. Because let's be honest, I am the last person that you want advice from. I can't even figure out my own life. What the fuck do you think I'm gonna do for yours? Also be sure to leave in the comments down below what you want the next video's title to be, and the one that gets the most thumbs up, but also probably not, may or may not be the next video's title. So now on to your incredibly weird questions. Like, can I, for the love of God, just get a normal question in one of these videos? Oh, here's one. That boy Keen asks, how long does it take to wash and dry your hair? Oh, wow, okay, that's actually a good question, and uh, I would say that usually it takes- Also, how long is that schlong? God damn it. Spazzy Wazzy Dazzy asks, I know you normally look for funny questions, but I want to know, how have you been holding up lately? Oh, really bad. Thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, no, I'd probably just say that generally I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good, I guess. Yeah, I try to do like mental health checks with myself every once in a while just to like actually see how I'm doing, which is by the way, a really good thing to do. I know that this isn't like an advice video, but that is a good piece of advice. Like every once in a while, just have a literal talk with yourself and see just generally how your mental health is doing. It's great. It's almost like you're dating yourself. Like you take yourself on a date and literally just ask yourself how you're doing and shit. It's actually very therapeutic. And yeah, I think though where I was going with that is that I was going to say that generally speaking, I'm in a good place and uh, it's taken me a while to get there, but yes. Lark from Patreon asks, what is your least favorite song you've ever heard? Probably anything my girlfriend has ever played for me. <laughs> And I know you're probably thinking, like, Destry, that is rude as hell, bro. But no, she would attest to this too. Here, let's just listen to some stuff that's on her playlist. Make the pizza rolls, they make you feel good. I love pizza rolls. Yeah, imagine trying to sit there being a supportive boyfriend, like, yeah, it's really good. But I've been doing this thing where even if a song is like incredibly bad, I'll still dance to it like Kelly from The Misfits when she's listening to James Blunt. <laughs> Just like. Uh, in addition though, I, I found a song the other week on Twitter that is literally the worst song I've ever heard to the point where I just could not stop laughing at it. And apparently it's like a racing game on the Switch or something, but here, just, just, just listen to this. It gets worse. Here, wait. The lyrics are, nothing's gonna stop me now, but somebody please stop this woman right now. Nothing's gonna stop me now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Gets me every time. Tizzy asks, can I please have my ice cream now? I have no idea what you're talking about. Anna Louise asks, what is your favorite snack? Mmm, probably the mom from Sky High's butt. I mean, damn, girl. Don't even attempt to DM me unless you're the mom from Sky High. Woo! You know, the honest answer though is that I think it rotates a lot because I have like a super addictive personality and so I try not to eat too much of the same thing, otherwise I will literally just continuously non-stop eat it. Like if you could have seen how addicted I was to caramel corn, it was bad. Right now though, I would say that probably my favorite snack is uh, these ice cream sandwiches from Ruby Jewels. If you want to just put a picture of one of those. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One of those. Oh yeah. Do do not feed my addiction to these things if we're ever hanging out. I'm serious. Brisk Cat asks, how's the non-existent girlfriend doing? Does she blow up quite nicely? Oh, ha 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 ha, it's really funny. But no, she's doing pretty good. Hey, you leave Gwendola alone, okay? She's a beautiful soul and she deserves our respect. Uh, one thing I really love about her is that she's made out of plastic so no one can attack her on Twitter. What's that? You, 
You made a Twitter? Gwendola, come on, man. You're going back in the closet, Gwendola. Queen B asks, what is the worst food you've ever eaten? I'm sorry I keep asking about food. Unacceptable, how dare you ask me about food. The worst thing I've ever eaten. Uh, anything other than Sky High Mom's butt? I'm sorry, I'll stop. Uh, oh God. So there's this one time that my friend Taylor and I went up to this uh, casino here in Washington called uh, Il Ilane? Ilani? And I'm not like a gambler or anything. Like the only reason we were there was literally because there was nothing else to do in our town. So we get to this casino and I see this bright, big, colorful sign that just says tacos. And if you know anything about me, I would sell my own grandmother for a taco. Sorry, grandma. So I get this burrito thing from there and I have low expectations. It's a fucking casino, right? But I kid you not, it was the nastiest thing I've ever fucking eaten. I'm gonna warn you right now, like if you're eating, put that shit down because just thinking about this thing is like, <laughs> oh, so I take a bite of this thing and it literally tastes like vomit. Like the sauce or salsa or whatever was in it was vomit. To the point where I was like 90% sure that the guy working in the back of the fucking kitchen was just like, oh, we ran out of salsa, let me just, Bleh! oh, good, that's good. And to make matters worse, it was leaking out the bottom of the tortilla. So like there was just this giant congealing fucking pile of vomit sauce and sour cream just in this tortilla. Oh, nasty, right? But no, it gets worse. I try to salvage this thing for whatever reason. I don't know why, I guess I was that hungry. By just eating the meat part of it, you know, like leaving the vomit sauce off to the side and just eating the meat part, cause why not? So I take a bite into the meat and all of it was fat. Like not just a tiny portion that you could like rip off and then discard, all of it was fat. So just imagine me sitting there, I take this huge fucking chunk of a bite and it's just Oh my god, dude. It was so fucking rancid. Single nastiest thing I've ever eaten. Uh, a bunch of people asked, Planning on any new music? Where's the new music? Vegas Music Influence? And will you be releasing any more music soon? I love it! Uh, yeah, I actually just released a new song a couple days ago called Say What You're Gonna Say, which I had actually been working on for a couple months, and I remember writing it, actually, in a Motel 6 while there was a drug deal happening right outside my window, so not a joke. But yeah, uh, it is available now on Spotify, uh, Apple Music, like all the streaming sites and whatever, and I think it'll be available here on YouTube, so definitely uh, check back here on this channel in a couple of days. But here's a little preview. I'm super proud though of the song uh, and it was actually inspired by a terrible relationship I was in. Sorry, let me clarify. One of the terrible relationships I was in. <laughs> and I'll definitely release uh, more music in that same sort of genre. So sort of like weird indie electronica. I'm not even sure what, but uh, yeah. Buggy Ann asks, have you seen any new movies or shows and what are some new favorites? Asking me if I've seen any new movies recently is like asking if my mental health is bad. Of course! But no, I literally like fall asleep to movies, wake up to movies, have sex. And you know, since I haven't made a monthly favorites video in a long time, and I probably won't anytime soon, I haven't been watching a ton of shows lately, but of the ones that I can, uh, that I can recommend for you guys, I definitely would say The Boys is a fantastic show, uh, if you like, like, super violent kind of superhero stuff. Also, The Misfits is a really good show I recently started watching. I'm also the king of re-watching shit, so, uh, movies-wise, I've been re-watching just a ton of Jackie Chan movies and uh, I've come to the realization that I would really love Jackie Chan to just be my grandpa. Gonna make a new video. Dudes, I want to be my grandpa. Jackie Chan and then fucking the guy who made Zelda. Look, just, just look at him. He's so cute. Like, I promise I won't sell you for tacos. That's just my grandma. Sora Lawlight asks, what do you think of your old content? Is there anything you regret? anything you're proud of slash would do again. Well, thanks for your question, and that's just so weird that part of your tweet was just scratched out like that. Uh, I would say though that I am proud of most of the things that I've done on YouTube. I think that my content has evolved a lot as I have as a person, but the one thing that you can count on that will never change is that I will always, 100% of the time, laugh at farts. That is my pledge to you. Super Shag 19 from my Discord asks, any updates on your Spooky Man movie? 
Ooh, actually, yes. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, actually, a couple years ago, I made a music video called The Legend of the Spooky Man. And then uh, after that music video, I wanted to write a horror screenplay, but I didn't have like a good subject matter until I realized, holy shit, I literally directed something with an original like concept why not expand on that and make some cool like lore and story and shit so uh as of now i actually have the full first act uh printed out and this is a big fucking deal to me because i have never done any sort of like screenwriting or anything like that so to have like physically a big ass this is like 50 something pages it's a like big ass thing and this is just the first act so i still have a butt ton of work to do on this thing but i still wanted to print it out and and have something to be proud of uh with writing dylan grabbed her thick ass thighs and pulled it in his direction Damn, mommy, why you so thick, he said. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> but yes, if you guys are interested at all in uh, following the Spooky Man script and any other screenplays that I might be working on, because I'm working on like three right now, I'll probably be posting those over on my Patreon, so definitely uh, check that out, patreon.com slash Uh This person asked, Destry, would you say that you are polyamorous? I think personally I would say that I'm not, um, but I do. I am one of those people that thinks that there is a difference between uh, just casual casually seeing someone and actually like dating someone because when I'm in a girlfriend boyfriend situation like when there is a title attached to it I am monogamous as fuck but I also have been in situations where I am just casually seeing people and in that situation obviously there still needs to be a level of communication with uh you know what your intentions are and all that shit but I do know plenty of people that are in polyamorous relationships and it works well for them it's just not something that I can personally do but thank you for your question almost wine mom pre asked I don't have anything funny to say. I just want a shout out and for you to make the ugliest face you possibly can in the video. Oh, sick. Thanks. But yeah, here you go. Oh my god, put that away, bro. Sorry, I know. I, I got a face so hideous that YouTube instantly demonetizes it every time it sees it. Okuda99 from my Discord asks, Weirdest fan reaction you've had that you can enjoy looking back on? Ah, uh, well, uh, there was this one time that someone came up to me and was like, Oh, dude, I'm a huge fan. Oh, wow, thank you. I love your work in Spy Kids. Floop, right? No. Yeah, oh god, you're fantastic, dude. I, I'm, I'm not- Oh, no, I know who you are. You're little Nikki, right? Do the voice. Adrian, get in the flash. Yeah! <laughs> get in the flash. But no, honestly, none really stand out just because I, I'm just kind of happy whenever anyone comes up to me. Wow, that sounded really sad. Okay. Arcano Prism asks, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? A weird one, but West Virginia. Oh, almost got demonetized. You did. Damn it. But no, that is uh, that is serious. Um, I do want to go to West Virginia, and for no other reason than that's actually where uh, the Spooky Man script that I wrote is set. So I just kind of want to go there and uh, research the area and camp around in it and, you know, just, I guess, kind of get more inspired to finish this thing. Other than that, though, I would probably say either Japan or the UK because I haven't been to either of those places, but I love them. But sadly, I don't have thousands upon thousands of dollars to go there. Unless, YouTube, you want to give me back my monetization? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Oh, okay. Tyler Rose Hanley asks, show us your titties. Well, okay. I mean, you asked nicely, so. Oh, you said kitties. Oh, <laughs> well then, yeah, sure. Here's my big sleepy boy. Are you sleepy? Oh, he hates it. Okay, cool. Bye. And then my ginormous fluffy monster. Hi, bear. That's right, you're not an asshole like Mr. Boy, huh? And if anyone at my apartment complex is watching this, uh, I'm actually filming at a studio location, and I'm definitely not at my apartment right now, so um, I definitely don't have an extra cat that I didn't tell you about. Lonely Talon, not so lonely, asks, Do you do lyrics made composed to sound? Like, if song sounds good but doesn't have lyrics, do you care? Oh. Fuck. I'm not gonna lie, I almost had a stroke reading this question, and uh, I'm still not even really sure what you're asking, so... Yes? If you're unsure of what's being asked, just say yes, and nothing bad will ever happen. Nikki J asks, Are you dead? Yes. Uh, some upside down name on my Discord asks, What are some of your most valuable lessons you've learned over your lifetime? Don't trust anyone. Ever. For any reason. Ricky Shoku asks, If you could give advice to your younger self, what would it be and why? Don't trust anyone, ever, for any 
reason. I'm joking. Sort of in that same vein though, uh, you will meet people in your life that you will want more than anything to stick around, but some friendships, some relationships are not meant to last forever. And that's okay, it doesn't make you a bad person, um, and there are lessons to be learned in failure and failed relationships. Uh, another one, do not eat a burrito at a casino no matter how brightly colored the sign is. Don't. <laughs> Wage Gap asks, if you were on a deserted island and could only pick five video games to bring with you, which ones would you choose? Okay, how does a deserted island have power for me to play video games? Couldn't I just use that to contact someone to get me off the island? Or You know what, let's pretend like this question makes sense. Um, <laughs> number one, Zelda Breath of the Wild. I think that one's probably just obvious why I would choose that one. Uh, number two, the Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Uh, I would choose that one just because I have so much fun playing that game and it, it, there's so much to do in it that I would just occupy hours upon hours of my time doing it. Number three, Nino Kuni, The Wrath of the White Bitch. Again, there's just so many hours of gameplay on that one, and, uh, you know, it's just filled full of Studio Ghibli goodness, uh, so much so that some dumbasses will get a tattoo of it on their wrist. Uh, number four, Banjo Tooie, because that's just my favorite game of all time. Number five, Final Fantasy 12. I think I'm strictly picking games that you just can get lost in. Oh, Skyrim. That would be, yeah, probably Skyrim. Also, Saints Row 2, probably Grand Theft Auto 5. Uh, maybe Dishonored. How many is that? Too many? Okay, well, there you go. Another video game related question. Tal asks, what is the angriest you've ever gotten at a video game? I don't think I've ever gotten mad at a video game uh, ever in my life. And there is no proof of such a thing be ever being the opposite. I am always calm and rational when I play video games because I am mature. Fucking piece of shit! <laughs> Slinky Deer asks, how was slash is your sex life? <laughs> Well, that's a little personal, wouldn't you say? Join my Patreon for the nitty gritty details of this question links below. I'm totally joking, but seriously, join today. I'm Nessie asks, will you take the BDSM test? <laughs> Why would I take the bad decision simulator machine test? Why would I take the Bible discussion and study meeting test? Why would I take the babies don't solve marriages test? The only BDSM I am is big disaster, sad man. Or maybe bad day, shit myself. These jokes doing it for you? Subscribe for more. <laughs> Okris Prince from Patreon asks, What's your thoughts on that new rap artist that's popped up? Lil Accident or something is his name? Oh yeah, I've gotten actually a lot of DMs saying I look like this guy, but uh, he's obviously way more handsome. So, like here, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. See, like, who is that guy? But yeah, he seems like a cool guy. Uh, I DM'd him a couple times, as you can see here, with this totally real conversation. Screenshots can always be trusted. Um, I'm pretty sure that Abraham Lincoln said that. Next question from, oh, little mistake. Are you single, Ma? Cause you caked up and I'm looking to eviscerate, dominate, ejaculate, then vacate. Oh, you stop it. But yeah, if you guys want to check out his music, uh, I'm sure whoever he is, he would really appreciate that. So uh, links down below. Raise your hands in the air if your dick like a knob. Give it up for my fingers who just do a better job. And finally, a question from Don is watching Wave. What was the worst thing you've ever bought on Impulse and do you still have it? Ooh, um, that is actually a tough one to pick. Mostly because I think my entire entire apartment kind of fits that description. But this question did make me realize I actually never did a moving in vlog when I moved into this new apartment. So I thought, why not show off my apartment to you guys and uh, we can discover all of the random shit that I bought on Impulse together. Transition. So when you walk in, you're pretty much just immediately in the living room. So got my TV. Uh, there are two Studio Ghibli posters behind the TV. I get a lot of questions why I do this. I don't know. I just think it looks cool. Okay, fuck off. Above the TV, I have just kind of like my mask collection, if you want to call it that, as well as just some random like Darth Maul. Uh, you got Master Chief right there and uh, Reaper from Overwatch. Also, I try to theme all my rooms. So my living room is sort of my Lord of the Rings themed living room. So I have all three Lord of the Rings posters there, there, and there. Uh, I have a map of Middle Earth right here. Over here is actually where all three Hobbit art books are, as well as uh, original concept art by John Howe and Alan Lee, uh, who are the original concept artists from the movies. I kind of just have a random Game of Thrones section right here because I didn't really know where else to put it. And then uh, down there is Elfquest and randomly Death Note. I'm not sure 
sure why, but I had nowhere to put that one either. There's my view outside my window, so it's kind of nice to just like wake up and see that every day. It's pretty dope. On this side, we have my bookshelf where we got a couple more uh, collectible stuff. So we have some Back to the Future jazz up here, more Game of Thrones stuff up there. Uh, we have Daryl from The Walking Dead holding a cat. Down here, we have Castle in the Sky, which is my favorite Studio Ghibli movie. And then way down here, we have uh, everything that uh, Seth MacFarlane has ever pretty much made. So it's my Seth MacFarlane corner, Got a Million Ways to Die in the West book, as well as the Orville stuff, uh, art books and comic books and all that stuff. So yeah. You might have also noticed that I have a giant hockey net just in my living room. And you might also notice that the chandelier above there kind of seems a little bit bare. And that's because there used to be a little glass thing like right here. And uh, in my old apartment, I kind of shattered that and I decided to take that off and put it in my storage. I would show you what's over there, but that's the kitchen, and honestly, that smells like Ron Perlman's morning breath, so I just don't want to show you that at all. When we turn over here, we have the Hobbit uh, maps right there, and then got this lovely beauty, which has scared away people for sure. Buy it today, desmerch.com. And then the rest of the house is sort of down this little hallway, so we have more Studio Ghibli stuff here. I have a sort of a little mini section right here for my Banjo-Kazooie stuff. Uh, this is actually the original cartridge that I had when I was a kid of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. So you'll probably notice that they're kind of like look like shit, and that's just because they were the original ones that I had, and I decided to immortalize them by putting them on my wall. This first room right here is actually my filming room, um, which is sort of a mess right now, and this is basically just where I film any video I have. So you'll see on this wall, there's the white wall whenever I do uh, what the fuck news. The wall behind it, as you can kind of see there, is a green screen. So what I'll do is I'll push this wall over there and then kind of just let the green screen uh, be right there. On this wall, I have a gray screen and then behind it a black screen. And that's more so just for photography and stuff, but I have used it for like YouTube rants and stuff like that. I tried to theme this room, even though I don't like come in here that often, uh, as my Transformers room. So we have Transformers comics and then the uh, Gen 1 Transformers poster behind it. And then over here is sort of a little workstation that um, I don't often use that much anymore just because I have a kind of better computer in the next room. But uh, this is just like kind of a personal computer and I still, you know, do some stuff on it, including DJing. Uh, occasionally, which is why that's out. Uh, this is my studio where I stream and make music and all that sort of shit. And it looks like I might have actually been working on something. Let's see what this is. Oh, oh, yeah. This is so fucking funky. Oh, yeah. You wanna fucking dance with me right now? Sorry. Um, so yeah, this is sort of the uh, the hub of where I edit. Uh, I film a lot of videos there, I stream there, and obviously making music. Over here, I actually have this uh, 3D printed precursor orb that my friend Mike Pixelweezy and his wife made for me. So thank you guys for that. That is now kind of immortalized on my desk. As I turn over here, you'll notice that there are three sort of like postery things. And these are actually all of the expansions for Hearthstone, which is one of my favorite games. And honestly, there wasn't any good like Hearthstone posters, so I had to make these myself, but I thought they looked pretty dope. As I move this way, you'll see that I have my little couch with my giant ass Totoro on it. Got another synthesizer behind there for some reason. And then this is my giant um, display case of everything that I own that is Banjo-Kazooie that isn't on that wall over there. So I have the original uh, cases right here, got this cool Kotaku one, Rare Replay back there, which contains Banjo-Kazooie, got a golden little jiggy right there, a massive golden jiggy right there that I got from Etsy. A couple of these things in front right there were actually printed by Mike and his wife again. Honestly, this fucking white Jinjo just gives me the creeps. I had it on my desk, but I couldn't stand looking at him, so... <laughs> Down here, we actually have the new Amiibo of Banjo-Kazooie, which just came out. And then uh, we have the two Jinjos on the sides. So yeah. In this closet, uh, I have <laughs> my old 3D TV, my old iMac, and a bunch of synthesizers that I don't use anymore slash are broken. We don't need to go in there. You'll see that I have uh, just a nice little sign there that just says ass. <laughs> Below that, I actually printed out a page from the Black Zodiac. It's actually from a movie that is called 13 Ghosts. Fantastic movie. In my personal opinion, and I thought that looked really sick. So also as you leave, you'll see that I have posters for The Legend of the Spooky Man and Dance
Dancing in the Dark, the two kind of big productions that we worked on. As we come back out into the hallway, you'll notice that I have a wall of Dishonored shit, and I cannot tell you how many times I bump into this mask as it's like dark and I'm coming through this fucking hallway, and honestly scares the shit out of me every fucking time. Like, just, just, just look at this. This wall is actually just more Zelda stuff that I couldn't fit in the next room, which I will show you now. This is my bedroom, and it is a very Legend of Zelda themed, as you'll see. So first off, we have the Kokiri shield on the wall. I have two more of the shadow boxes on the wall that are uh, Majora's Mask and uh, Ocarina of Time. Got my massive bed. Oh, what's that? what's that? Hey, buddy. Are you hiding? What are you doing? What are you doing, man? <laughs> so next to my bed, I have uh, a couple of shields as well as the Master Sword. You never know when you're gonna need to use it. You know, I just like to have that really, really uh, handy near my bed. We have this chest that is filled full of uh, like accessories, sort of like like scarves or whatever the fuck. And then that one, which is full of uh, marital aids and I'm not gonna open that. Most of anything that I've ever gotten from Adam and Eve is in that chest right there. Above the bed, we have this cool poster that I got of uh, a Zelda Breath of the Wild print. And then uh, a lot, just a lot, just a lot of Zelda stuff. We have the Master Sword, we have a bunch of the Amiibos and even more behind there. That thing right there is actually called the Retroid uh, the Retroid Pocket, which is actually a sort of like a, a mini switch that allows you to play um, any, pretty much any retro game up to the Dreamcast, which is pretty sick. On the top shelf, we have a couple of Link statues right there. The original N64, of course, since it is my favorite console. And then uh, a lovely picture of me and my mom and my grandma. I just like to keep them near my hearts. My hearts, yes. I'm a, I'm a doctor from Doctor Who. I have multiple hearts. Next to that, I have this little patio area that I honestly don't use that often. It's just kind of there and one of the reasons I don't use this is because there's a neighbor cat right fucking here that will jump up onto the roof and then jump down and fucking pester him so like every morning I have to come over here and close this door so that they don't fucking fight each other and it's just so goddamn annoying it's like just put your cat away dude like Jesus also the reason I don't use this outside area is because there's a wasp nest right up here and I haven't really fucking dealt with it I think I actually tried to come out here to like spray them with shit and then I saw a wasp directly looked in my eyes. And I, from that moment on, I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna fuck with you. So much like the Banjo-Kazooie display case that I have, I also have the Zelda display case in this room. The top shelf, we have the Breath of the Wild art book there. We have Link's Awakening, which pfft, sucks. We have Breath of the Wild there. Ooh, this one, uh, we have Breath of the Wild 2 Hestu's Quest. Definitely a real game, not at all Photoshopped for a video. Actually, these little guys are Dejin or Jin from uh, Golden Sun. Once again, my friend Mike Pixelweezy and his wife print for me, which are just adorable. We have some more Zelda shit. And uh, then the next two rows are kind of just full of games and just various art books. As I turn this way, you guys might notice that I have Glamdring, which is the sword that Gandalf wields in all of the Lord of the Rings movies, uh, as well as Orcrist, the sword that uh, Thorin Oakenshield wields. And you know, like I said, I just like to have swords at my ready just in case someone breaks in. You know, they might have guns, but I'm gonna be like, hey man, don't mess with me, I have Lord of the Rings swords. So yeah, when it comes to things that I bought on Impulse that uh, I regret buying, I'm pretty sure my entire apartment can fit that description. Well guys, that is it for another Captain Desk Desk Q&A. I appreciate anyone who sent in questions, and for those of you who want to send in more questions for a future Q&A, I guess now would be a good time to tell you that I am no longer going to be active on Twitter, and this is just entirely a personal decision. Decision. It, uh, it's, it's really just the fact that Twitter itself is an incredibly toxic platform and you know regardless of what's going on in my personal life or not I just fucking hate it and uh, I've hated it for several years and I just thought you know what fuck it I'm not going to post on there anymore so if you want to follow me if you want to ask questions or anything of the sort you can do that at my discord the link will be in the description down below that's basically where I'm going to be posting most of my stuff from now on going forward but yeah my discord is a super welcoming community it's honestly like kind of baffling because I never talk on there or I used to never talk on there and just to see that there's been a lot of growth on there and people helping each other out is really awesome to see so so yes definitely check out my discord or any of my other socials in the links down below with that said i will see you next time um i guess we'll play my new favorite song as we fade out but i love you all thanks for watching and fair win